JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 29th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It lost the most ground versus NOC, CAT, SEC and NZD in that order, while it underperformed the least against the Japanese yen. Now, the strengthening of the commodity linked Looney, Kiwi and Krone combined with the weakness in the dollar and the yen suggests that markets traded in a risk on uh, fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, most uh, major EU indices closed in the green, and although all three of Wall Street's uh, main indices finished lower, this was after the S&P 500 hit a fresh record high. Investors' appetite improved again during the Asian session today. Yesterday, the main items on the agenda were the FOMC decision and the speech of US President Joe Biden before Congress. Getting the, ball ro the, uh, getting the ball rolling with uh, the Fed, policymakers decided to keep their monetary, policy setting, their monetary policy settings unchanged and repeated that uh, um, they, will, uh, they, will keep so until, uh, they will keep doing so until labor market conditions have reached the levels consistent with uh, the committee's assessment of maximum employment and if and inflation has risen to 2% uh, and is on track to, moderate it, to moderately exceed 2% for some time. Yes, they acknowledged the improvement in economic activity, but at the press conference following the decision, Fed Chair Powell stuck to his guns, saying that the economy is a long way from their goals and uh, that it's uh, not the time to start discussing about tapering quantitative easing. This is in line w with uh, what we've been expecting and thus we will maintain the view that with the Fed staying dovish, equities and equities are likely to continue trending north. Other risk-linked assets like uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi may also benefit from investors' uh, decision to increase their risk, their risk exposure. On the other hand, the US dollar and other safe havens like the yen may stay under selling interest. Now passing the ball to Biden, in a speech before Congress, the US President proposed a sweeping new $1.8 trillion spending package. Although Democrats applaud uh, Biden, Republicans stayed largely silent, which raises, raises question as, questions as to whether they will eventually support uh, the plan. In any case, Democrats hold majorities in both uh, chambers of uh, the Congress, which uh, means that uh, his proposal could pass without Republican support. After all, this was the case with uh, his 1.9 uh, trillion US dollars pandemic stimulus plan. Maybe that's why equities marched even higher during and after his speech. As uh, for today, the spotlight may turn to the preliminary US GDP for the first quarter. The forecast uh, suggests that uh, economic activity in the U.S. accelerated to 6.1% quarter-over-quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate from 4.3%, but the Atlanta Fed uh, GDP now model uh, points to a 7.9% uh, expansion, which tilts the risks surrounding the actual forecast to the upside. A solid number will confirm that the world's uh, largest uh, economies recovering from the coronavirus-related damages at a fast pace and may eventually tempt uh, some uh, participants to start thinking as to whether uh, the Fed should consider normalizing its policy earlier. 
This could take the US dollar slightly higher and equities lower, but we don't expect it to prove a game changer. We would consider such a counter reaction as a corrective move. We stick to our guns that uh, with the Fed prepared to keep its policy extra loose for long and uh, President Biden willing to pass uh, more supportive bills, the broader market sentiment is very likely to stay supported. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the European session, Germany's preliminary inflation data for April uh, is due to be released. The CPI rate is expected to have uh, ticked up to 1.8% year over year from 1.7%, while the HICP1 is anticipated to have held steady at 2% year over year. This is likely to raise speculation that Eurozone's headline CPI due out on Friday may also rise somewhat. Later in the day, from the US, apart from the GDP, we also get the initial jobless claims for last week, where expectations are, are for a small increase to 549,000 from 547,000. We also get pending home sales uh, for March, which are forecast to have rebounded 5% uh, month over month after tumbling 10.6% uh, in February. Tonight, during the Asian session Friday, we get the usual end-of-month data dump from Japan. The unemployment rate and the jobs to obligations uh, ratio for March are both expected to have held steady at 2.9% and 1.09% respectively, while the preliminary industrial production for the month is anticipated to have tumbled another 2% month over month after sliding 1.3% in February. The core Tokyo CPI, CPI rate is anticipated to have ticked down to minus 0.2% year over year in April from minus 0.1%, uh, but no forecast is available for the headline rate. We also have two speakers on the agenda, and those are uh, Fed Board Governor uh, Randall Quarles and uh, New York Fed President John Williams. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. At this point, I have to let you know that uh, there will be no daily market review video tomorrow, neither a Weekly Market Outlook webinar on Monday. So goodbye, have a great rest of the week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again on uh, Tuesday. JFT, just fair and direct.